from Liz at Home. I want to say thanks so much for joining me. And today we're going to be colouring in Summer Nights again. I want to try and see if I can do a lot in this book. I have a desire to finish another Hannah Carlson book. I have finished Daydreams and I'm sort of concentrating on this. So I want to do the facing page to this one. I'm not going to do the exact same background on this page. I used watercolors following a color along from a different channel. So on this page, I've chosen some Neo Color 2s, which I'm not always great with. I thought it would be fun for me to, I'm just going to cover that one, for me to try them out. I've also gone with a sort of a brown and yellow toned page and I have a vessel of water and just a size 6 uh, round brush that I'm going to be using to activate them. And I'm going to start with my darkest colour in the corner, which is Toledo Brown. And I'm just going to colour. So now I've decided to do a sped up colouring because I'm just basically putting this colour down. And I'm going to tell you the colours that I'm using. If you like how this turns out, rather spend the time watching an overview of it and do your own because I go over and over it and change things up so I would not really recommend that you follow me step by step. I think it ends up looking fine at the end, but some of my choices along the way are not really fabulous. For instance, I started with Toledo Brown and then I moved on to Van Dyke Brown or Van Dyke Brown. I'm not sure. I think you American and British people call it Van Dyke in South Africa and um, the Netherlands, we call it Van Dyke. So Van Dyke, Van Dyke Brown. And then I use Sanguine, Saffron, Light Ochre, golden yellow and flesh. Those are the Neo Color 2 colors that I'm using in this. I started with Toledo, went on to Van Dyke and then on to Sanguine and then on to Light Ochre, then golden yellow, then flesh. But I went back again later on and rather use the Van Dyke as the darkest color. So that's the main reason that I really wouldn't suggest you follow this uh, because the way I did it was kind of uh, one step too many. So I'm just basically filling in all the way around here with the Neo Color 2s and I'm going to skip to where I've filled it all in and show you how I start activating them with water because this is basically just coloring in with crayon and I don't think you particularly feel like wasting your time watching me doing this. So here we're getting to the end of this and this is the flesh color and I have tried to sort of blend them as I've colored but not that much. I tend to want to do the blending more once I add the water. My color choice has been restricted because I don't have a hang of a lot of Neo Color 2s. So I need to choose colors that I have. So if you have colors that are perhaps a bit closer together, I would suggest you use them. I made the choice not to go further than this with them the first time just to see what I thought. But later on, I did add some color to the middle, as you'll see. So now I'm just putting the Neo Color 2s away, including the broken saffron. I think it was the saffron that broke, which I was sorry. And I just dip my paintbrush into water and I'm going to zoom in. And so that you can see, I'm just basically adding water to the starting at the lightest color and trying to go from the lightest to the darkest because the color will move and I really don't want the dark 
to come over into the light. I'd rather blend it the other way around. I have put this paper towel underneath my hand because of my normal problem of using a lot of hand cream. I don't want to leave the page that still needs to be colored with hand cream, which will make it difficult to color. So now I'm just trying to go over the next bit and trying to use slightly more circular motions. This is quite a soft paintbrush that I use and I do prefer it to a water brush because it doesn't keep giving water. It is a thirsty brush though so it holds a lot of water but it's not feeding constant water to the bristles so I feel as if I have better control over the water. I'm going into this darker colour here and that particular colour which is the Toledo Brown is not really a favourite of mine. So as you can see I dab a bit of the water off before I go on and I'm just going to follow this process kind of activating the whole page and then I want to let it dry once it's all activated and then make some decisions about where to go from there. I, as I'm doing this, my thought process is very much along the lines of I'm not quite sure why I'm doing this because it was actually much easier on the facing page using watercolors. I suppose Though to answer my own question is that I have spent my pennies, <coughs> excuse me, on these neocolored twos, and so I need to use them. I want to try using them, incorporating them a little bit into mixed media on one of my watercolor pages and seeing how that works, but quite honestly, I have better, personally, me, I have better control with my watercolour paints than with these. So here we come to the first thing as to why I think you shouldn't follow me step by step, is that this flesh colour, I think I should have chosen golden ochre. And I think I'm going to go in with the second layer once it's dried and rather move that towards the golden ochre colour, as I think it will be better. Meantime, I'm carrying on activate. I am bringing some of this yellow over to blend it in. So now I'm going to move down to activating the lower part of the page. I have sped this up a little bit as well and I feel more as if I'm getting into my stride now down at the bottom. It always takes me a while to sort of get in the mood. The paper in the corner is a little bit um, damaged because when I did the watercolour on the right hand side I used some masking tape and I even used my hairdryer to lighten up the masking tape so that it would come off but it still stuck to the paper a little bit and so a little bit of the paper lifted the top layer and I think the reason that this Hannah Colson paper takes water so nice is that I think it's a coated paper so when you use real watercolor paper there is what's called sizing inside it which helps the water to sit on top a little bit longer and to take a while to soak in and I have the feeling that there's some sort of coating on this Hannah Colson paper to allow it to accept all this media, all these various media so well. You'll see that I am bringing some of the darker colour up and I'm liking the way this looks much better than I like the top. So I think I'm going to continue like this. Okay, well this is dried up and it's much paler than I want and I actually don't think I like the way it got lighter so I'm going to add another coat here to the lower one and I'm going to do this another layer not another coat <laughs> but you know what I mean 
and I'm going to um, do it at the top as well. Just so that there's more pigment. And I'm going to try this up here. I think I like this sort of look of the darker corners. Go all the way along the top. This is the Van Dyck Brown. Van Dyck is what we would say in Afrikaans which is quite close to, it's a derivative of Dutch, the language developed from the Dutch settlers in the country. In the 1600s, the Dutch people found South Africa. Mini history lesson for you guys. <laughs> We've just had the biggest windstorm And it, it's like not far from us, sort of in the area that my daughter works and near Stellenbosch University and that they closed the one tunnel through the mountain because a truck was blown off the mountain pass. The wind sort of really funnels through the one area. And in the Stellenbosch and the what they call the Helderberg area, roofs have been blown off and... They've closed all the schools, but that's not our area. So it's been really quite hectic. I'm going to go straight on to this color. I'm not using the one in between, which is Sanguine, which is like a French word for blood, I think, actually. So it's a sort of metallic-y brown. Not metallic -y, but of an orange brown and I don't want to turn my book too much for you guys so I'm so sad I put a video up this morning at three o'clock 3 a.m I scheduled it for and I mean I think it only had about seven or eight views I always feel so sad when I go to all this trouble and hours of making the videos and nobody watches them. It's really quite disheartening. I was very grateful though that somebody did comment on it. It was a glue booking video and actually um, those are proving quite popular. So I think that basically my channel is too too scattered. I think there are too many different things on it. And that is kind of who I am. So. so I'll just finish that. And I'm going to just do a little bit more. I don't really like this fleshy colour. I prefer the yellows. I go straight into the ochre. No, I go straight into the this orangey colour, which is my broken pencil, which is it's broken. Right, I have no idea what it is. I think it's saffron. So basically, I think the colors that work, the Van Dyck Brown, the Sanguine, Saffron, and then the Yellow. And when it's dry, I'm going to put some metallic gold on. Just in splashes here and there.
So I finished all of those. I did the yellow as well and now I'm activating it in the same order going from the light to the dark but I've rem removed most of that sort of flesh color and um, I am taking some of this yellow from the the actual pastel crayon as well just to try and get a bit more pigment and trying to activate all the light a bit first around the top before I go into the orange and then blend it down a little bit. So I want to get that kind of nice blended, slightly textury look that one gets. And I remember a while ago using my finger to try and blend it, but it doesn't seem to be making a whole lot of difference. So I think I'm not going to continue with that. And I'm going to just zoom in a little bit as well so that you can see what's going on. I would love to know in the comments, do you like it when I zoom in or do you prefer the whole image just sort of at a bit of a distance? I once had a complaint from a viewer who let me know that my zooms made her feel ill and I don't wish for anybody to feel ill. I just know that I personally, when I'm watching somebody's video, like to be able to see what's going on better than if it's in a distance. So. I'm trying not to use too much movement, but I do try to kind of make it look right. <clears throat> I think that, that this is actually looking okay now. Just trying to get a little bit more of a blended look. Some of the top doesn't look quite nice, quite right, but I think it all comes together once I add the gold a little bit later on. So I think one always needs to embrace the fact that you get to a, a slightly ugly phase in a picture. It always makes me panic a bit when I get to that phase and I think, oh, this is never going to work out, but then to just keep going and hope that it all turns out okay. I still think it would have been easier with my watercolours. <laughs> Oh dear, I do like my watercolors very much. So I'm trying to use this broken piece directly from the crayon. I'm just rinsing my brush out of it to get some of the pigment off now going to the yellow. The yellow is golden yellow that I'm using there. Just try to bring that down. So so you can see on the facing page there's some sort of metallic gold paint on as well. Can you see it sort of shining over here? And I liked that look and I loved the way it sort of blended everything. So I'm going to be doing that on top of this as well. I'm using, it's, I think it's the Kuritake's, no, I'm not quite sure what they are. I think they are Kuritake colors. They're my very favorite golds. I use them nearly all the time whenever I use a gold paint. They're various different golds from pale gold to dark gold, blue gold, red gold, white gold and they're, they're really nice. They're the kind of paint that you've got to sort of activate quite a bit and then get it to a kind of creamy consistency and then paint on this stuff and basically you just apply it and especially here with color underneath you can sort of go here and there and um, sorry I'm a little bit off screen there but I come down into the on screen now and because it's kind of the same color over everything and it's slightly translucent it helps to blend everything well I think anyway and I'm kind of quite happy with how how this makes the the background look. I think it looks kind of rich and royal. <laughs> but then this is me and I always just love my shiny, glittery, goldy colors. They're my very favorite. I've always wished and wished and wished that I could buy those jewel colors, but they've somehow always been just outside my budget. 
And yet, I mean, as I said, consistently say, I have so many art supplies that I don't use that I don't think I will buy them. I've got other shiny glitter paints that I use a lot that are not finished yet. So I just need to keep using those. As you can see, I use, I activate the paint a lot to kind of get it working well. And, and in my opinion, this kind of makes all the difference to this background and makes it look good. So it's just blending out the color differences and I'm really liking the way this looks. So I'm going to skip to the end of when I've done all of this gold because I'm sure you don't need to watch me doing all of this and this is in any case going to be such a long video. Oh my goodness me, this picture took me probably about four days to do. So I'm going to skip to the end of the gold now. And ta-da, it's done. And here's all of the background done. And it's nice and shiny and rich and it blends very well with the next page, which makes me super happy. Hope you can get some of the shine of it. I'm trying to get it on the light there so that you can see. And then I'm going to show you little bits of how I approach the rest of this picture. So I didn't want to do a whole color along. I've done this using Prismacolors. I've used reds and greens and aquas. And um, I then, I more wanted to show you what I'm doing with the whole of the background. So once again, I did the thing twice. I did this now using one of the colors that I had used before, which was the sanguine or the light ochre. I can't remember which I've got there. But in any case, it doesn't really matter. And I colored the whole thing. And then when I'd finished it, I ended up going over all of this bit that I'm coloring now with black Prismacolor. So I just wanted to show you. This whole picture took such a long time and so many different stops and starts, but I thought I'd bring you on the journey. So this was step one. So you can see what it looks like in that color in case that appeals to you. I didn't like it. I'm using true green as the pale green. I've used dark green as the darker green and lime green as the sort of yellowy green that you can see. So I'm filling all of these little circles in with dark green and I do that all the way around the whole picture so that you can see how that looks. So I've done all of the outside with the dark green and now I'm doing well the inside little bits with the dark green. Also these, I've done dark green outside on the circles and this is the true green that I used on the mask as well. And I'm just doing this inside bit, just straight coloring it. I didn't think that you would particularly need to see me doing this. So I'm just doing a little bit of it with you guys. And then I have some decisions to make about other things. I thought of trying my glaze pen on these little round buttony circle things. Not quite sure what they are. Um, thought I would give that a try and just see how it works. I also want to use my dark green on these little leaves here so just doing dark green on the inside of the leaf and then i will use white so just go lightly at the top i'll use white to blend it need to sharpen my white. I need some more work. I 
So I went over some of this with the Neo Color 2, but luckily these Prismacolors are such beautifully opaque pencils that you can kind of cover up minor disasters. <laughs> Thank goodness. Because a lot of these circles also, and over here, I've had to go over things. So now I have this as a glaze pen. Wait, I've got another piece of rough paper here. And it comes out wet, but it looks like this sort of lime green that I've got there. And I thought... <clears throat> Let me first try these. It will be sort of shiny when it's dry, which I'm hoping will look nice. It's not as light as I had hoped. Hope it dries a little bit lighter. Well, I'm kind of committed to it now. So I just hope it dries a bit lighter. If it doesn't, I might add some stickles to these circles. On the other hand, I don't really mind the way this is looking. I think I want to go down this left side so my hand doesn't sit in the wet glaze pen thing. So just going around all of these. I think you don't need to watch everything. I'm sure you're going to get bored. So I'll do this off camera as well. So I've done half of this side with the Thule Art Acrylic Paint Pen in gold. And I've just been straight coloring it. I'll show you what I've done. Just straight coloring. And I'm not quite sure, um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with this border. And I was debating whether I should use gold or silver because everything else is gold. And I decided I would go with the, stay with the gold. And I'm not entirely sure that I've made the right decision. But what I want to do in these little, um, Gaps. What I've been doing on the tiny dots is been using a Jelly Roll Moonlight pen and just been doing those dots um, like around here. I don't want to put my thumb on anything that's wet. Just simply filling those dots in with the Moonlight pen. But what I want to do in the middle dots and over here is use a uh, stickles and I tried these two colors I'm not sure if you can see um, but I think that I'm going to go with the green sparkly one and hopefully that's going to look nice because I feel like I need a bit of shine here so I'm just simply going to pop that on like that and let it dry. And then I need to go and upload this video because I need the room on my video thing. I'm teaching in a few minutes, well, like in 15 minutes, and I need to get this video off my phone and onto the computer because I need to record my pupil for a competition and I don't have enough room left on my phone. So I'm going to do this like this and then go and upload this video and I will finish colouring all of this offline and come back and take a photograph and add it to the video to show you what the end result looks like to end with. So hang in there. We're nearly done. I think that's going to look quite nice. Okay. 
and I think it matches up with the facing page quite well. So here you can see the final picture. It looks a bit dull because I had to take a photo and I didn't have the right lighting, but in real life it actually looks just as shiny as it did previously and I much prefer the black background. Thanks for watching and spending the time with me. I really hope that you liked the video and I really hope that you'll give it a like and a thumbs up and that you'll leave a comment. Bye-bye now. And I hope that you have a really great and creative week. Take care.